أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. Today I would like to share a story with you that is very close to my heart, and that is regarding the way in which I discovered Islam, and how I embraced this beautiful way of life. After which I would like to share something with you that I had found within the Quran to answer some of the questions that I had all my life. And then I would like to conclude with a message that you can take home with you to your loved ones, to your family, your friends, and especially your work colleagues. Alhamdulillah. I was born and raised in a Christian family. My father was the pastor of our church. My mother, a beautiful singer within the choir. From a very young age, I've been nurtured by the names of the prophets, from Abraham and his sons to Noah upon his ship, Moses with his remarkable courage to guide his people to safety. It was from this very young age that I was met with a burning desire to follow in my father's footsteps, to become a religious leader. And so I dedicated myself to this cause and I soon acquired a platform upon which I could share my passion for God and what I then believed his untainted revelation. As I reached my mid twenties, I was met with a position within the church where I could share all this, where I could be a youth leader for my church itself. And as my independence grew, religious freedom took hold, I started asking questions to my religious leaders which were often left unanswered. It was during this time that my mother also started reading more regarding Islam, and she eventually embraced Islam. What happened upon her journey is that she wanted to write an article for a local magazine regarding Hajj. And so she approached a Muslim man to write this article for her. But he then went on Hajj with his family and he extended an invitation towards her that if ever she has any questions, feel free to ask. So she took it upon herself to start composing this article. And as she studied more regarding Islam, she fell in love with this beautiful religion. Now, during this time as a youth leader and a Christian missionary, I contested her quest for additional knowledge. And we often debated with one another, in love, in compassion. She is still my mommy. But I still remember during this time that whenever we would have youth group and we would do praise and worship in our house, I would turn up the music just a little bit, lo a little bit louder to try and call it back to Christianity. Now, it was during this time where I realized that my desire to follow in my father's footsteps to become a religious leader within the church was starting to wither apart. And I decided to work abroad for World Caribbean Cruises as a photographer in marketing and sales. And it was at the airport where my mom held me in a close embracing hug and she prayed a prayer over me, which I will never forget. She prayed a prayer to a new God, Allah, whom I did not know back then. She prayed to this Allah to send a very big angel with me, to guide and to protect me upon my journey. And so I left for my flight and I landed in Australia and I got onto my ship and I opened up my bag and I realized that my mommy had left me with more than just a prayer. She left me with a copy of the Holy Quran. And it's on the very first page of this book that she wrote a little note and she said that if ever I want to debate against Muslims one day, I need to understand what they believe. I need to know where they come from. What is their history? And so that makes sense to me. And with the love that I have for my mom within my heart, I dedicated myself to reading at least one page every evening. One page soon turned into two, two into three, and I found myself completing the Quran from cover to cover. This is, brothers and sisters, where my spiritual battle began. A battle which left my heart and my mind and my soul torn. I was separated countries between myself and everything that I held dear. And yet I knew I was exactly where I had to be. I felt betrayed by my religious leaders who did not educate me regarding Islam. And yet I knew that there was still something that was guiding me. I felt as if I did not really know this God. And yet, I knew that he was right there beside me. And so I dedicated myself to start a comparative study between the Holy Quran, the Torah, and the Gospels. And what I had found truly astonished me, that there's more cohesion between these revelations than what there is separation. From the very core principle within the Holy Quran, found in Surah Iqlas, where it says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Kulu ahad, Allahu samad, Say that he is Allah, the one and only. 
This is echoed within the Bible. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verse 4, where Moses, peace be upon him, says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Confirmed by Jesus, peace be upon him, as to that which came before him, and that is to come after him. In the book of Mark, chapter 12, verse 29, where he says that the most important commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. To the very concept that nothing in the heavens above, the earth beneath, or the water beneath the earth will ever resemble this God. Echoed in the book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 3 to 5. And confirmed by Jesus, peace be upon him, as he stands before his followers, the Pharisees and his disciples. And he says that you've never heard the voice of God. Neither have you ever seen his shape. In the book of John, chapter 5, verse 37. It was as if I've been reading a new revelation. As all these truths came to me and inspired within me the ability to wholeheartedly make my kalima and say that, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah that there is no God worthy of worship except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Muhammad, peace be upon him, is his messenger. Now this is where my journey began. And what I had found within the beautiful Quran is that all these questions that I had throughout my life were answered. What is our purpose in life? Why is there evil within this world? Does God truly exist objectively, rationally? And so, having found this beautiful answer within the Holy Quran, I realized that everything that I'd ever sought for is answered right here. And today I dedicate myself to go out there and to invite other, other people towards this way of life. But brothers, I want to ask you, personally from myself, I spent 20 years of my life never hearing about Islam. The only image that I ever had about Islam was that which was portrayed through the media, that which I saw on the television, that which I heard on the News 24, that which I saw on YouTube. And during this time, it was also 9-11, the atrocity that occurred. And that was the image that I had heard about Muslims being these terrorists, being all this and that. And not once was I approached by all the Muslim people that I had known back then regarding what they believe. Because truly, that is all we need to do within this life, is to go out there and to tell an individual that, hey, John, hey, Peter, you know, can I sit down with you and tell you a little bit more about what I believe as a Muslim? I mean, you've known me for so many years. Do you know what I believe? Because a lot of people don't have that knowledge. And we know that this is an obligation that is placed upon our shoulders. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us within the Holy Quran, chapter 16, verse 125, he says that, Invite all to the way of thy Lord with wisdom and with beautiful preaching, and argue with them in ways that are best and most gracious. So fundamentally, it is a principle and it's a responsibility that is placed upon our shoulders. Ask yourself intrinsically within your heart, have you fulfilled this obligation? Do you go out there to invite people towards this way of life? In this beautiful city alone, there are over 5 million people that need to hear this message. And this message will not be heard except if it is for every single one of you that is sitting here today. To go out there with the people that they know closest to your loved ones, your family, your friends, your work colleagues. Sit down with them. Just tell them that I believe in a creator that is all-powerful, all-knowing. He has no beginning. He has no end. There's nothing in the universe that could ever resemble this God. And we believe in a final prophet, Muhammad, peace be upon him. And we believe that Jesus, peace be upon him, is also a prophet. For 20 years, I did not hear this message. For 20 years, I did not know this. And it is upon each and every one of us to go out there and to invite people towards this way of life. And we know that with this comes great reward as well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Holy Quran, chapter 41, verse 33, he says that, Who is better in speech than he who invites towards thy Lord and does righteous deeds and says that he is a Muslim? Brothers, I feel like we've become ashamed to be Muslims, honestly. We need to go out there and be proud of this way of life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he's perfected this way of life for us. So why don't we go out there to preach this? Why don't we go out there to invite people towards this way of life? There are so many people that call their, their ser or that become a servant to so many things of this world. Might it be their status? Might it be their wealth? Might it be their business? Might it be their family? So many people become subject to so many things. And yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran that he's not created humankind but jinn and jinn, but to worship him. So why don't we go out there to help our brothers and sisters that are out in this world to share this message because truly it is that simple. Oftentimes if I find myself in a dawah situation, all I need to do is to tell an individual what I believe 
and through that their fitra within their hearts is awakened. It is not our responsibility to tell an individual that, listen, you're worshipping idols or you are going to, to, um, to hell or what you're doing is wrong. That is not the place. What we need to do is share that message, plant that seed, because it is only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that can have that seed grow. Take all that clouding of their fitra that is upon their hearts and take it away and reawaken that sense of belief within them. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may evermore guide us upon this.